auspicious greetings, venerables, ladies, and gentlemen. I am Jue Wei, Director of the Humanistic Buddhism Center in Australia's Nantian Institute. Today, the Australian Sangha Association, Buddhist Council of New South Wales, Nantian Institute, Rain Bodhi, Sydney Insight Meditators, the Monastery at the End of the World, and Seri Mata Rama are very excited to see the fruition of Mirrors to Wisdom, Poetic Reflections on 2020. After several months of planning and promoting this event, we have arrived here today, commemorating 2020 and looking forward to 2021 with poetry. May I now have the pleasure of inviting Professor Bill Lovegrove, President of Nantian Institute, to deliver the official welcome to this poetry event. Bill, over to you, please. Thank you very much, Jay Wei. I'm delighted to be involved uh, mainly as a spectator today and I look forward to the event. Uh, but first, I'd like to acknowledge the Darawal people as the traditional owners of the land on which Nantian Institute is located. And I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you are all located. And I pay respects to elders past, present and future. I think the concept of poetry as the theme for today is, is uh, a really interesting and insightful theme, especially given the year we've had and the year we have to. Uh, Venerable Jay Wei sent me some poems to consider reading, uh, not to compose, but to read. And she wasn't aware when she sent it to me how meaningful it was because they are poems written by Ujuru of the Nunakal people uh, from Stradbroke Island. Nunakal was formerly known as Kath Walker. And when I was a student at the University of Queensland, she was very active there. And my wife and I also frequently visited Stradbroke Island. So there was an, an immediate and lovely link there. But it was more significant for my wife and I than just that. Uh, this week, you know, Venerable uh, Ujuru Kath Walker was probably the first strong indigenous voice that I ever heard asking we, the, the white people in Australia, to understand indigenous experience and indigenous history. Uh, I was a young person at the time, but it had a big impact. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is this week I was reminded with this uh, poetry session as well, but reminded through the ceremony for the Australian of the Year of Ujuru and her poetry. I don't know if any of you watched that ceremony, but a Dr. Miriam Rose became, um, Miriam Rose Ungama Bowman became the Senior Australian of the Year. And she had a simple plea to uh, white Australia, I would say, in a crude sense. She said, Indigenous people had spent a long time trying to understand white people's way and to understand our culture. Her plea was for us to move a bit more towards Indigenous culture, but the big plea was to listen, listen to the experiences, listen to the history of an Indigenous, of indigenous Australians. It was a very simple plea, but for me, it was a very, very powerful plea. And I think of 2021, looking to what would be better for Australia, what would make Australia a more harmonious country? What would help us do some healing in Australia? I think the plea to listen more deeply, to move towards Indigenous history and culture was a very nice message to come out. And I like the link, the purpose personal link for me back to uh, Kath Walker Ujuru all those many years ago. Venerable Jane Wei gave me uh, an opportunity to read a poem. I was very hesitant about reading a poem. The last time I read a poem publicly, I was in grade seven at primary school. It wasn't very good. I got a well-deserved fail. So having welcomed you to today and also uh, looking forward to the rest of the day and congratulating Venerable Joe and all the organizers of this and all of the community's practice for achieving, I think, success beyond expectation. 
I'll now read this very short poem by Kath, uh, Kath Walker Ujiru. It's called Balance. Spin a coin, life or death, next of kin to death is life and life to death. Light comes before dark. In life, we wait the birth of death. So with those few words, and there's a, a poem I thought with nice uh, Buddhist overtones and, uh, and it links to some of the themes or a major theme running through some of these communities of practice. So welcome, enjoy the rest of the day and so will I. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Bill. That was um, a beautiful introduction. I'm really pleased to hear that you have a very personal um, connection with um, Ujuru of Nanukal, um, but also that, oh, sorry, with, with Miriam Ungara Rose. I was also delighted to hear that she was mentioned in the AO Honours this year because she's a great, um, you know, her, her, her way really resonates with me. So I, it's wonderful that that these poets and these um, Indigenous elders are coming to the fore uh, for us into our communities as well. Um, I just wanted to um, do a little introduction uh, to this event. And just to, to I, I had mentioned um, to the poets who are presenting today briefly that uh, the, the, this is not a competition. So we've had quite a number of um, submissions, I think maybe more than 50 submissions. And it's been just wonderful to see the effort that people have made to, to, you know, to, to send these in to us and be part of this event. The, the event actually follows on from um, a teaching or a, a, a group that I facilitated earlier this year at the Buddhist library. And at the time, the Buddhist library had asked me um, would I do a teaching? And so I'd said, look, I'd really like to do something on poetry. And at that time, the library was a little bit hesitant. Um, they hadn't done it before and they thought it might be a bit risky <laughs> in the times of COVID um, that, that they wouldn't get the following. Um, but I assured them that, that there would be a take up. And so there was, and we did, a, we, we, had, we met over a couple of sessions and, and it was a really lovely um, meeting. And so a small number of people from that event have gone on and we're meeting on a monthly basis. And so from that, Venerable Jue approached me and asked me um, if I would be part of a, um, an event with, with the community of practice um, focus at, at Nantian Institute. And so it started out in that way and then it became bigger than Ben-Hur. Um, we, we then included quite a number of other um, Buddhist organisations, which Venerable Jiwe has already uh, referred to. So it's been a very collaborative effort. And um, that's been a wonderful thing for our communities too, to see that we're not just isolated silos, but that we do actually talk to each other and, and you know, work together. So I hope that you really enjoy this event. Um, I just wanted to say a special thanks to people who submitted poems and to say that um, it, it, it's, we would have liked to have had everyone who was available um, be able to read today, but because of the time factor, we've had to select out a small number. Now, I just want to mention really quickly what that selection process looked like. Um, so it was really about three, three of us, Venerable Akaliko, myself, and Miss Flora June. We came together um, initially to look at how we might select people. And so we, we basically, each of us nominated a small number of, the, of poems that we, you know, were, were, were sort of had so many for us. And then we put them into a, a, a hat really. And, um, and so what's come out of that has been, you know, it's, it's really been a process of, of um, partly personal choice but nothing, not really in any terms of making any discriminatory, you know, judgment of the poems, partly on um, themes, um, looking at different themes and looking for, for groups of themes. And, and, and eventually it came down to selecting on the basis of people who were available to actually be present and read today. So that's, that's how that came about. 
I just want to say a little bit about, um, you know, just an introduction to, to the notion of poetry generally. And, um, you know, to say that really some things are, are beyond definition. Um, and poetry, I think, is, is really essentially one of those things. You know, we, we might have all agree that um, the great poets of Shakespeare, et cetera, are, are truly poets. Um, and we can talk about styles and genres, et cetera. But you know, we, is it necessary, for example, that poems rhyme? Um, you know, this is the, the categories that we have. You know, what is it when it doesn't rhyme? Um, what if the lines don't scan or have a recognisable meter, as in free verse? Can we just randomly put words together and call them poetry? I imagine that most of you would say that that's, um, that's a little bit, you know, uh, way out there. Um, so in our attempts to define poetry, there's often a common assumption. And that's that there is something at the core of the concept of poetry, some intangible quality that we can put our finger on if we just try. But this requires an objective definition of poetry. And essentially there is not one objective definition. We might, for instance, say that a poem is a collection of statements that plays with rhythm, cadence, diction, meaning, and also something that sometimes having a rhyme. But as we might say, an apple is a red fruit with white flesh and seeds inside. In both of these examples, we're grasping to caption something intrinsic about them. But things don't have intrinsic qualities. And as Buddhists, we know that, 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 that things don't have intrinsic qualities. They only have qualities in relation to others in their interdependence. So we might say that a poem is a poem because it is like a Shakespeare sonnet and not like a user's guide, a manual to how putting together a machine or such. But we might also say that a poem is a voice sculpture, the poet's heart and mind finding her voice. And a poem may be shaped by what is unseen, keeping its secrets while it tells us our own. A poem pays close and generous attention to the things of the world, to the life of the mind, to the feelings in our hearts, to the struggles of existence. So today we're going to pause for a moment to appreciate the outrageous, the humorous, the sorrowful, the profound, and also the generous and uplifting, writ large in the paradox of our shared human condition. So with that, I just want to move on now to introducing the first poet. Now I've got lots of notes here and I have to. So I'm, the first, first poem I'd like to introduce is uh, Gowan um, Powell Davies. Davies Powell, which is it? Powell Davies, sorry Gowan. <laughs> um, if you'd like to unmute. Hello, Gowan. You're still muted. Priscilla, can we do something for that? Have you got me? Oh. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay, yes. sorry about that. So I want to actually um, hand over to you, Gowan, and you can um, introduce yourself and please share your poem with us. Okay, will do. Look, um, it's lovely to be here with a group of such like-minded people, and I'm really looking forward to what's coming. I'm what you might call a very occasional poet. When I go on retreat, I often write a poem towards the end, and that's about it. And this poem comes, it's actually a, a pre-2020 retreat, but it sort of had the feeling of 2020 for me. And as often happens on a retreat, I'd formed a particular attachment to a tree that I often found myself near. And the tree kind of spoke to me and we got to know each other. And out of it emerged this poem called The Gum Tree. 
its flayed trunk reminds us that nature is not always kind, that in time we grow accustomed to our sorrows. Perhaps it welcomes the chance to strip off its armor and stand naked to the sun, but perhaps it just doesn't care. Last year, two lovers wrote their names in its bark. By next year, they'll be gone. Thank you so much, Gowan. It's a very, very short, but very um, moving and um, poem of basically, I think, of the truth of impermanence. Yes? Thank Absolutely. you. And I realized that I've got out of order here because you were, the list, list was one way and then it was changed. So now I'm sorry, I will go back um, to my first one that I had, which was Nilanka. So Nilanka, would you like to share? Yeah, oh, thank you, Zunan. Uh, my name's Nalenka. I live in Sydney. Um, I've done a short poetry course many years ago on, with the New South Wales Writers' Centre and have an interest in poetry just as a hobby, not, not as a profession. Um, my favourite poet is Mary Oliver and she's really inspired me a lot to write from the heart and about your family and nature. Uh, my poem is titled 2020, and it's about uh, COVID-19 pandemic and my family's direct um, battle with cancer. Um, yeah, last year was a challenging year for the world and especially my family as well. So I'm hoping that, um, yeah, that we can all get something from this poem. Uh, 2020, a dream of high hopes a dream of high expectations, frozen in the abyss, only to spiral out of control. A chance to stay at home, reflect on what we value, what is of importance, testing our patience too. We wore face masks out and about to protect ourselves and others. We stayed away from those we loved to protect them out of love, not anger. It was a challenging year, a trying year, an enduring year, a strengthening year. It brought the world closer while stifling, tra while stifling travel. It created borders, but brought us together in our hearts and minds. 2020, a year to remember, pain, joy, and sorrow all combined into one. Waves of highs and lows, we wait for middle ground for balance to return. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, that was a very deeply moving uh, poem and a deeply moving reading. So thank you. And uh, it's you so good that we um, remember the events of last year often, often as human beings, we have very short memories once things start to improve, um, but it is important to keep um, these memories in the forefront. And so I'm just going to ask now to move on. The reason I had um, was going to start with, with the, these two was because they are basically addressing the COVID situation um, that come out of that circumstance. and. Um, so the second one I'd like to ask Cindy Lou, if you would join us, please, and present your poem and read. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. How are you? Um, yeah, first of all, I'd just like to express uh, thanks to um, the organisers um, for this wonderful event. Uh, I very much enjoyed reading so many amazing poems. Um, uh, I myself fairly new to poetry. Um, I'm in healthcare, and when uh, COVID came, I was actually terrified of getting it and passing it on to my mum. Um, my poem just conveys um, the difference that some things can make, um, some kind words, gentle reminders, and also very importantly, a sense of connection and community. 
Um, I'd just like to also thank the Meta Centre uh, in particular for this and Tina Ng and all the wonderful people there um, for all that you do for the community. Um, during lockdown and the subsequent um, uh, ongoing waves of COVID, the Zoom meetings that you organise um, greatly helped me, um, especially Justin who facilitated it and as well as the other participants. And it was really good to um, listen to other people and support everyone. Um, so uh, yeah, it was just the gentle reminders uh, to help me put into practice um, the things that we learn. And, and we realized that yes, the Dharma can really help alleviate our suffering and provide some comfort. And this is my poem, a gentle reminder. Swept by a tsunami of fear, scrambling, desperate for safety, scrubbing furiously, panic sets in. Have I missed a spot? How do I prevent mum from getting it? <sighs> Grateful for some connection in a world changed by the invisible. Wise and kind words, a gentle reminder to breathe, to scrub with softer strokes, intention on compassion. Fear still exists, but no tsunami, only waves. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cindy. Um, I think these, this one and the, the previous poem, you know, they're, they're very impactful, aren't they? Because we've, we're still very much um, you know, feeling uh, the effects of the COVID-19 circumstance. And, um, you know, it's wonderful that in the midst of the, you know, the suffering that some of you have been able to put this into words and to share that with us today. So thank you. Um, I want to now invite, we're going to move back now. We started with the nature theme um, with Gowan. And I want to just intersperse some of the COVID and uh, poems with, with some um, other kinds of poems and nature poems uh, to give us a little bit of a break from the intensity perhaps of the of the COVID experience. So I want to now invite um, uh, Venerable Tik Tong Fab Tay to um, please join us and introduce your poem and um, read to us. And Tay is a good friend, very dear friend of mine. So I'm, I was very happy to see him participating today. Thank you, Sunin. Um, I'll introduce myself first. My name is Tit Tit Pampa. I'm a bhikkhu within the Tuklam School of Vietnamese Zen. My teacher is the most venerable Tit Pampa. I actually live in on the border of Nukunu country and Adnamatnya country um, in South what we call now South Australia, and we also call this area the Southern Flinders Ranges. So I'm on the almost on the border of the desert. And I didn't realize, for some reason, I didn't see the bit that said, write a, um, account for 2020 in the COVID-19 virus. So my poem is not about that at all. I'm in 2015, Spiritual Care Australia, Tasmania branch, hosted the Spiritual Care Australia National Conference in Hobart. And I was a member of SCA Tasmania branch at that time. I was invited to offer a morning reflection from within the Buddhist tradition. And the theme for the conference was trees and their deep rootedness in the earth. So I looked everywhere for a suitable reading, including from within the sutras, and I didn't find one. So I decided that I'd compose one. And this following poem is what I offered. And I think you'll notice that it's not just about trees. Trees. Born beneath a pipal tree, the baby brought great promise into the world. Resting under the rose apple tree, the child began to realize that great promise. 
Exhausted beneath the banyan tree, Sujata makes the decisive gift, rice milk. The journey to the Bodhi tree is possible. Seated beneath the Bodhi tree, the human, luminous and free, broke free of all, broke loose of all fetters. Lying beneath the Sal tree, the old monk entered into final liberation. Trees with their roots deep in the earth bear witness. Putting the roots deep into our own hearts, we discover wisdom and love. Thank you, Tay. A wonderful poem, and I can understand the fittingness of the occasion that you first uh, wrote it for. But it's still very important today because, as we know, uh, we're losing so many, so much of our, our forest and old growth um, forest. And so the care of trees is such an important um, you know, task for all of us now um, and to ensure that we, we have some of the remaining forestation uh, in this country. So thank you. And of course, as, as you mentioned, Tay, the relationship between the Buddha and trees was quite profound. So thank you. Um, I'd like now to invite, um, who's the next person? Um, Tom Fielding. And he's going to talk uh, to actually read his poem, Moran Bungles, where of course, there are also a lot of trees. So thank you, Tom. Yeah, um, it was uh, a journey I, I took to try and um, reconnect uh, with natural world, leaving the city and all its relationships behind for a while. And um, I had never been to the Warren Bungles National Park <clears throat> up towards the northwest of New South Wales. Um, so, yeah, just trying to connect um, the experience uh, with language, uh, words, thoughts, the whole thing to sort of wrap it up, um, um, the journey and, and the, this sort of five kilometre bushwalk in, into this war and bungles. <clears throat> words buzz as spirits move through water and the leaky asteroid ejects milk and honey. Clouds bursting, horizontal, purple, so blue. In fact, they burst like bubbles, parachuting down fermenting flippantly with butterflies. Let's catch a big one, I say, and have an adventure. Asteroids leaking honey so blue, I leave aside the shadow. On the purple horizon and descend. In fact, I burst down way down butterflies dancing everywhere let's catch a big one i grin spark the adventure now that asteroid is leaking honey throughout the milky way my clouds have burst horizon Purple, dark, dank, and musty. So blue, in fact, I burst up. Bubbles away. Yet I parachute down. Words angled, buzz, and jut to express in this wild life. Out here, we walk the blue sky. 
and a spirit wind breeze talks to us in this dry dust and clouds signal over the bluff like faces. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> it takes me a minute. This poem is, is uh, you know, it's delightful, really. I, I um, can just feel, you know, your presence in that experience in the Warren Bungles. And the imagery is so evocative. Um, so thank you very, very much for your reading. Um, we're going to now invite um, Siddharth um, to present and uh, his poem, The Die. Siddharth, can I invite you now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah my name is Siddharth. Uh, I'm um, new to writing poetry. I uh, just decided to uh, write sort of regularly over this uh, winter break. Uh, and uh, this is one of the first poems I wrote. Um, and I was just thinking about uh, a lot of the um, randomness and uncertainty that uh, face us uh, in day-to-day -day life and uh, larger time scales as well. And yeah, so um, here's my poem, <clears throat> uh, The Die. A die spins randomly, but what launched it in space? When the die settles, has it chosen a face? Or was it the throw? Uh, neither the hand nor the die could possibly know. Thank you, Siddharth, so much. Um, I, I wanted to actually ask you, what is a die? <laughs> uh, like uh, a six Sorry? Die, uh, like a six-sided die that rolls and uh, like a die yeah 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 but a singular one would be uh, just a die oh i see so yes yeah, so i thought that was the case um but i just wanted to clarify <laughs> i thought everyone else might understand something different um but yeah look again that's a you know the, your imagery is is very evocative and, um, you know, it's, it's the, um, you know, it leaves us, I guess, with um, a question in our mind, really. Um, who is this about? <laughs> who is the, who's actually thrown in the air? <laughs> so thank you very much for that. And you did actually submit another couple and, and um, these short um, contributions are very excellent. Thank you. Now I'm going to invite um, Nilushi. Nilushi is going to share with us her poem, Heavenly Glen. So thank you, Nilushi. Thank you. Um, so I compiled this poem on an island off Thailand, this beautiful place that I went for some spiritual retreat time. And uh, forests have always meant something quite special to me and they are very much a spiritual experience in itself for me. I had a very felt experience of uh, transformation stepping into this place and I try to capture some of it in this, uh, in this work. And um, I'm in another beautiful forest place at the moment, Santi Forest Monastery. <laughs> so I, I, I really have a strong link between um, nature and spirituality. Um, I remember like when I was young, like tucking a Ajahn Man bibliography, <laughs> biography book in my arm and going off to a tree somewhere <laughs> inspired, not not getting very far, but inspired nonetheless. <laughs> um, so yes, um, this is my poem. Um, and uh, so yeah, I think I'll start. So Heavenly Glen, magic waters, fairy glen, when can I feel your peace again? Elves led the way to the place we would play wonderfully lost in your deep green, watched only by the unseen. Sweet relief right from the start, steps in your depths delight my heart. Walked on a tangle on the floor of the jungle, a maze of roots 
a world of its own, masterpiece, home of an own. Sparkling, trickling waters cool, sheer delight immersed in your pool. And from my being, you drained away all the tensions of the day. Feel somewhere higher, thankful to Gaia. No photo could do justice to this. I've never been here before, but I've been here before. On that note, as Tolkien wrote, left of the moon, east of the sun, near Narnia, Neverland and nowhere, I found myself there. Sanctuary for sages throughout the ages, beloved forest, I'm home. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nalushi. <clears throat> that um, you know, it brought took me back to my youth with the Tolkien and Narnia references, <laughs> and um, I'm really glad to hear that um, at least a large part of the inspiration is the forest itself, and to be at Santi is a, you know it's one of my favourite um, forest monasteries. The it's a very special place. So I'm glad that you're there and, and that can be some inspiration for you. Um, and please pass on our, um, our uh, respects to the two um, nuns who were, who were staying there at the moment. And of course, Bante Akaliko is also there. So we, we're also glad that, um, that he can have some rest time in the forest. So I just need to move on now to... Um, Alex and her poem, One Million and One Things. Thanks, Nilusha. Yep, uh, so that's me. And um, yeah, thanks so much to all of the poets so far that have presented. I'm really enjoying this. Um, in terms of my poetry experience, I've always been a writer, but not too much into poetry until Last year, my grandmother passed away and I decided to write a poem for her, which I read um, at her funeral. And that felt really right. Um, and it was really well received by my family and extended family. And so I decided to make this more of a practice because I also got a lot of therapy out of, of writing that poem. Uh, and so this poem uh, that I present here I actually wrote uh, during a pretty uh, dep depressive bout and probably the most uh, depressed I'd been in my adult life, uh, coming to reflect on it now, uh, being on the other side. And I wrote it to really remind myself of impermanence and to be grateful for impermanence, but also to be grateful for um, sadness and to be grateful for the slumps in life. Um, because as this poem testifies to, I don't think, uh, it's possible to be human without those periods. So, one million and one things that could happen tomorrow. Half are likely to be tinged with sorrow. The other expect to be happy and gay. Life is funny, the balance usually tips this way. Up and down, smile and frown. Moments of bliss, weeks of trepidation. Years of happiness tinged by negative rumination. Contentment is fleeting, expect to be in the pits again wallowing in sadness with little light seeming to remain, then suddenly burst through the clouds of misery and doubt to see the sun radiating as always, your sadness was just a passing bout. Is there a reason the pendulum swings back and forth, a roller coaster of emotion which obscures the direction of true north? Why not have one without the other? Picture yourself forever embraced in the arms of a lover, a hug so tight with no means of separation would transform serenity into eternal stagnation. All of the first and none of the second simply cannot be and ought not be reckoned. Thanks. Sorry, I was on mute. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, it, it really puts um, impermanence into a positive perspective. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you for the, it, it's, a, it's really a very um, poignant, but also inspiring poem. So thank you very much for that. The imagery again is, is very present to us, um, particularly in, in respect of the experience of the last year, but generally in terms of our life journey. And so thank you for leaving us with, a, with something of inspiration. <laughs> I want to now ask um, 
Tina. So, Tina, I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to do it in person. No, Priscilla has a hand up. So, actually, we're going to listen to the recording that Tina has made. Now, this is just before we do this, um, this is our final poem. And um, actually, we've gone much quicker than I thought we would. Um, but let's hear from Tina. This is the final poem, which is a bit of a wrap up for uh, this experience of our last year and of this presentation today. Hello, everyone. Thank you for choosing this poem. I'm honoured to do this reading of If 2020 Was a Mirror for You. In this poem, I took the major disasters that plagued Australians last year, the bushfires, the smoke, the floods and the coronavirus, and used them as our Dharma reflections. So this is similar to the Devadutas in Buddhist literature. Devadutas are divine messengers who appear amongst human beings to warn us of the perils of clinging and heedlessness so we may reflect on our own mortality and the need to do good. In the Devaduta Sutta, Majjhima Nikaya 130, the Devadutas appeared as a tender baby, an elderly person, an ill person, a criminal punished by the king and a dead person. So they appear in order for us to reflect in this way that I too am subject to birth, old age, sickness, karma and death. I have not gone beyond. And so I'd better do what's good in body, speech and mind. So this is also similar to the famous four sights that Prince Siddhartha encountered before his renunciation and reflect that he too is subject to old age, sickness and death and spurred him onto this journey, his journey to enlightenment. So too, this poem gives a different perspective and meaning to the disasters that appeared last year. So these disasters are to wake us up, to shock us out of our complacency, to challenge us to, to go beyond and against the usual ways of the world, to be courageous in making a change, to renounce our individual and collective greed, hatred, delusion and endless desires, and strive for the liberation of all beings. I hope this poem speaks to you in whatever way it needs to. And so here it is. So, if 2020 was a mirror, if 2020 was a mirror, what reflections would it show? If 2020 brought us lessons, what does nature want us to know? In subduing the roaring fires that burned everything in its path, can we subdue our anger and hatred and offer forgiveness instead of wrath? In clearing the bushfire smoke that plunged our skies into darkness, can we clear delusion with wisdom's light and calm our mind with stillness? In avoiding the torrential floods that swept away all it was destroying, can we resist being swept away by endless desires that drown us in an ocean of suffering? In containing the coronavirus that spread as a contagious disease, can we contain the infectious greed that causes harm here and overseas. While some may consider 2020 as a year that took more than it gave, perhaps 2020 was the shock we needed to challenge us to rise and be brave. So thank you so much, Tina. Um, I'm not sure whether you can hear us or not, but um, thank you for your wisdom and for the reminder really that it begins with us. Um, we have the, the, um, you know, the the teaching and the guidance that allows us to make changes and to turn around the negatives in our own life um, towards the positives. And if, if enough of this us do this, then we can really make a difference. So thank you. Um, I'm aware that we actually stopped a little bit earlier than I had had thought. And so I wonder, Priscilla, can we just give five minutes um, for, for anyone who wants to speak from, from the um, gallery um, with a, just a brief comment or? Uh, so we might need, Joe. can you un allow everyone to unmute? Is that okay? Sure. Thank you. Would Five Anyone minutes. Like to make a comment? <laughs> no. 
no, okay. it's been a lot in the chat. So <laughs> been some uh, okay, so that means we've got a little bit more time for the breakout groups, which yep. is which is great. So um, the breakout groups, as I mentioned before, they will be just, you just step and uh, Priscilla will lead that in terms of the mechanics of it. Um, but you'll find yourself suddenly out of this um, mode and into a small breakout group. And so then it's over to your group and uh, the facilitator <clears throat> decide how you use this time. And so let's look at, um, we now have, let's look at 30 minutes. Can we have 30 minutes for the breakout groups? Yeah, sure. So and then that will give us a little bit of time to come back and have put some chat uh, messages and then for Gowan to do the, the, the final summing up of the day. Sure. So thanks, Priscilla. Over to you. Thank you, Sonam, and thank you to all the wonderful poets. Um, so we're just going to have a little breakout group now. Uh, with, in each group, there will be one of the poets, um, but we haven't really formalised at all. I know there's a lot of poets here and a lot of people who just enjoy poetry, so we thought um, something quite informal where you might introduce yourselves, maybe talk about what you thought about of the poems themselves, um, and any yeah, other like interests and backgrounds, I'd love to, I think I'm sure everyone would love to meet and discuss in the community. Um, so I think Joe will pop us into groups of about three or four and just spend a bit of time introducing each other and having a bit of a reflection. And we'll be back at 5.15 and we'll just type some, some comments into the chat box if that's okay and, and find out what everyone's, what kind of experience everyone has had. So, Joe, are you good to split us up? Welcome back. I hope you've had a, a really um, meaningful and enriching experience um, in your breakout groups. Certainly, we were able to have um, some really good sharing to, to meet each other and learn a little bit about each other and um, have some sharing about the inspiration of poetry in our lives. And so what we're going to do is just give a, a, a short time now for you to write some reflections in the chat box. Um, so we'll have five minutes to do that. Is that right, Priscilla, five minutes? Where is Priscilla gone? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think probably five minutes and um, then we'll move on from there. So. If you'd like to make any comments, please do, do so now. And if you want to have conversation with each other, that's okay. <laughs> While people are writing in the chat box. Would you like to unmute everyone? So no more. Yeah. Hey, so yeah, yep. if people want to just share a little bit yep. um, personally about how the how the breakout groups were sure. for so, you. Yep, Joe, if you just unmute, allow everyone to unmute. Good. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Would anyone yeah. like to share something from your? Yes, it was great. It was great to connect with a, a group and. Um, exchange ideas and and um, and try and I guess fit you know connect and feel with other other people other beings um, on the poetry journey so I, I enjoyed it and I think our, our little group really enjoyed it Thank you very much, Tom. And uh, I should say that Tom is actually one of the members of our other little poetry group that's meeting monthly. And so I had heard the Warren Bungles before and um, I was delighted to be able to hear it again today. So thank you. And Cindy also is, is with our, uh, our little group. Um, is someone else like to share something from their sure. group? Sure, I can, I can share. Because um, I really enjoyed uh, talking about the different ways that uh, nature has impacted us, um, especially thinking about some of the connections we might have to nature from our home places. So that was quite meaningful for me. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, I did too. <laughs> Anyone?
anyone else like to share? Oh, will this be will this be an ongoing um, forum over time? Uh, so, so I guess what we're looking at now this is this was um, put together as a one-off event, mm -hmm. but we are looking at some possibilities. One is that we we keep the website up um, where the poets poetry has been submitted, and um, that that people people can um, contribute to that. Um, when and as you like, um, but it's really dependent on on what interests people have to go on from here. Um, I'm, you know, I guess um, I have limited time, but I would be happy to be involved in, you know, in co-sharing with others in having a, you know, perhaps a more regular group going going forward. Um, the, the idea of, you know, I sort of see this really as developing silos poetry silos. So, so we have the one post the library. Um, this is another potential silo. Um, you know, I'm encouraging other, other Buddhist groups, um, communities to perhaps look at developing, you know, a community, a silo within their community. And, um, you know, the possibility of coming together um, for further forums where we you know, people from those silos are coming together as well. And look, my, my big, big sort of picture, which, you know, is really in the, in the future and perhaps the never, never, is the possibility of putting together an anthology of Australian um, Buddhist poets um, as a first, really. It hasn't been done before, um, but it's a bit down the track. Um, it, we would need really to um, gather enough um, contributions and then, you know, seek a publisher, etc. But it's not beyond um, possibility. But in the meantime, I think it's just really encouraging people to continue to develop community around poetry um, because it, it, it is a really powerful way of, you know, connecting and just being with each other, I think. So does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Thank so you. I'd say over to you now. Um, we would really welcome um, your feedback, either in the chat or in the, you know, later in the, to the email with, um, you know, anything that you would be looking for or suggestions about how we might go forward from here. Can I say something, Sunim? Sure, Tay. Um, one of the things that's always been of interest to me is um, is how we can develop through poetry and all kinds of writing a whole lot of liturgical and devotional material that is the experience of Australian Buddhists. And I think this is a great start to that. Um, that um, you know, one of my things I love to do is to, to create liturgy for Buddhist people. And recently in a CPE unit that I supervise, I asked people to write a blessing um, for each person in the group and for a few other things. And they came up with some very beautiful blessings. And I thought, wow, this, is, this has got a real, possi this is real possibility here of creating something not just Buddhist and not just beautiful and not just devotional, but also Australian, um, and I, I, I am, um, yeah, that's what I think. Thanks, Jay. That's a great suggestion. Perhaps you want to be involved in. Yeah. Um, um, the, the, the other thing I'm planning is to, um, as I mentioned in the small breakout group, is I'm looking perhaps at um, in inviting um, students from with, within the university. Um, where I teach and study at the moment. Um, so that's not a Buddhist specific um, exercise, but it is, you know, really a recognition that, that poetry can be, um, you know, both inspirational, healing and community building. So don't be restrained by needing to stay only within the Buddhist communities to do this. You know, wherever you are, whatever groups that you're involved in, it may be a place for you to you know, just to encourage that um, with others. Did anyone else like to say anything? 
Hi, Sunim. It's Cindy here. Hello, Cindy. Hi. Um, yes, just had a question from um, one of the people in, in my breakout group. Um, they were interested in joining our little poetry group, um, the once a month one on the Wednesday. Um, what would be the best way for them to find out a bit more about it and, and join? Um, maybe we could put up some information on emails or how, what do you think? Yes, we, well, if you can direct them, um, you yourself, you can direct them to your email if you like, and you can yes, talk to I them mentioned. about it. Um, or they can, you know, other you can also listen. have uh, other, uh, my own email or Bronte Akadiko's email um, to contact, and um, we can give them just a little bit more information. But if that person, do you know that person, Cindy? Uh, yes, he, he, he said he would uh, contact Venerable Akaliko uh, himself, but yeah. I'm just, I guess, opening up for anyone else who's participating today. Yeah. Um, if they're interested, um, what would be the best way of um, finding out about it and, um, yeah, getting in contact, maybe on, yeah. Yes, I was, I was a little bit um, um, reserved about putting it up there in a major way because I think, you know, the beauty of these, these poetry groups is that they're small enough to be able to be a more, you know, a little bit of intimacy in them. Um, so certainly if anyone's interested, let's hear from them. Um, but it may be something that we discuss down the track with people about um, perhaps breaking into two or more groups um, so that we can retain that, uh, you know, that more intimate connection with each other. Anyone else? Maybe the final, final, because I know I need to hand over to Gowan, actually. Um, I'm, I'm not a very um, good timekeeper. <laughs> so perhaps we should say that if there's no more comments now from the gallery, um, I'm going to hand over to Gowan and he's going to uh, talk about more about where to from here. And um, perhaps also with the chat box. Have you had a chance to look at the chat box? Uh, yes. Um, yep. So would you like uh, to take over now? Thank you. Sure. Happy to. So I've got two jobs. One is just a little bit more about where to from here, but we've already had a, a bit of that. And the second is, is the thanks. The where to from here, I think the important thing, the important next step is next Sunday, the group that organised this is getting together again to say how did it go and what if anything might we do next so i think if anyone has suggestions or any reflections or, or things to offer anything that comes through before next sunday we can factor into our discussions so i would guess perhaps through priscilla or whoever's been sending out the emails for this yes. um, just reply to that email. perfect yeah i've just put the email address in there but i think everyone would have received an email yeah, well, this yeah. is the same email, BBEP? Poetry at the BBEP. Yeah, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, so just send, send any, any comments in there. And uh, as Sunim has suggested, you know, there's a number of things we could pursue, possibly an anthology, possibly keeping it as a live website where people can continue to post poetry. Um, and also um, perhaps having um, people on, uh, the opposite, on a mailing list where things relating to poetry can be talked about. And it seems probably the best way will be to make that part of the general communities of practice mailing list. Um, but again, we can explore the, the best way of doing that, but that would be a way of, st of staying in contact. Um, but I do think whatever emerges and follows on from this will partly come from the organizing group, but at least as much will come from you guys with ideas and suggestions and starting up your own, um, Sunim talked about silos, I'd like to think of bubbles, but same thing really. So the thanks. So um, the groups who supported this, it was um, Nantien put the kind of in the structure around it. And it was supported by the Sangha Association, the Buddhist Council, Monastery at the End of the World, Rain Bodhi, um, Sydney Insight Meditators, Terimetarama 
what that indicates to me is just the broad interest in this of groups of people who wanted to be here supporting it because in some way it spoke to their hearts and they wanted to offer this more widely. And I do think there's something very special about poetry and the way that it, it speaks to our hearts, not our brains. It unites us rather than divides us. And it always opens doors. Poetry never closes doors. So um, I think the um, range of organizations that put time into supporting this, it just indicates the kind of um, sense that poetry is important and we can do something with it. Um, special thanks, Venerable Jue for her leadership and, and structuring of all of our planning and putting it together. Venerable Sunim Bonyom and Bante Akaliko, who were on the organizing committee, who also selected the poems, and Flora June Lee, she was also on the poetry selection committee. And thank you for doing that. Not an easy job when you've got 60 poems and you're not sure which ones were written by your friends because it's blind. <laughs> um, Priscilla Wong coordinated the project and did a huge amount of work behind the scenes, as did uh, Joel Go and Joe Leung. And I'd really like to thank Bill for his introduction. I found it very moving. I, was, I thought it was very brave of him to try to overcome his traumas from primary school. Okay. And it sort of it said to me that poetry speaks to everybody in one way or another. And we may be shy about it, open about it. We may tell other people about our poetry, may quietly read or write it. But it's something we all share. And I'd very much like to thank all the poets who submitted and everyone who attended and has been such a splendid group to spend a Sunday afternoon with. So the last thing is going to be the standard Nantian group photo. Um, this is where I stand back because I have no idea how it's done. But I'll just say thank you, everyone. And I do hope that we will meet again around poetry in the not too distant future. <laughs> Thank so you. Who is our photographer? Thank you, Gowan. Thank you, Venerable Bumhain. Uh, I think Venerable Jishan, are you there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you are. Yes. So if you can just let us know what to do. Uh, I'm hiding for a long time here in the back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, is it nice time of group photo, right? Yes, please. Okay, can I? Uh, everybody can sit upright. Make sure you are right in the center of your screen. And just look at the, the camera like you look at everybody, right? And show a beautiful smile. Okay. So maybe we took two, two rounds. So just keep your smile, naturally smile. One, two, three. Okay. Give me a second. Relax your muscle, another one. One, two, three, smile. Okay, down. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Venerable. Thank you, Venerable. Thanks, Venerable. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> so I think that concludes the, the meeting, Sunu. Is that right? Mm, yes. And so, thank really, you so much. thank you to everyone. Um, all the thank yous have been said for the organisers and all the, but I really want to say thank you to each of you and please keep the poetry flame alive in whatever circumstance and opportunity you have. And I'm sure we'll meet again. So take care. What is blessings? May yeah. you know well.